Hello, and welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This session is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. So at this point, I would love to um, hand it over to our presenters. The first person we have presenting is SUNY Maritime College. So take it away. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Amira. I am one of the undergraduate admissions counselors here at SUNY Maritime College. I am also an alum of SUNY Maritime, so if you have any questions regarding student life, campus activities, um, or even how the schedule of classes, feel free to let me know in the chat feature, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. But for now, let's get started with our presentation, uh, which is will be very brief. <laughs> All right, so this is a picture of our campus. We are a one of the original 24 SUNY campuses. Um, there are currently 64 campuses within the SUNY system. We are located in the southeast section of the Bronx in a neighborhood called Throgs Neck. We are uh, literally just about half an hour from downtown Manhattan. And then that bridge running over our campus brings you directly into Queens and even Long Island. Um, and then we are a water 55 acre waterfront campus that has great views 24 seven, um, as you can see in my background, um, that is one of the sunsets that we pride ourselves in um, basically every single day. We also do have a training ship on campus and I'll explain a little bit more in detail about that in just a little bit. So briefly going over maritime by the numbers we have approximately 1800 students, 70% of which um, participate in the regiment of cadets and 30% of those students participate in the civilian program. We have 13 nationally recognized programs within science, business, humanities, as well as engineering. And all of our engineering classes are ABET accredited. We have over 80 student clubs and organizations, 13 NCAA Division III varsity sports, and an average class size of about 21. So something that students are similar to seeing in high school. We do have a very low student to teacher ratio of 15 to 1. So again, very close relationship that you'll be developing as a student with your professors. So they can even help you with um, any classes that you're struggling in. They can help you with some potential internship and career placement opportunities once you graduate as well. We This is a list of our engineering, Bachelor of Science, as well as our associates programs. Um, as you can see, we have five Bachelor of Engineering programs. And then our Bachelor of Science programs include um, all that is listed. The three business programs that we have is International Transportation and Trade, Marine Operations and Marine Transportation. Marine Environmental Sciences are only science degree and Maritime Studies is our only uh, humanities degree. Our Associates in Applied Science is in Marine Technology. So as I had mentioned before, we do have the something called the Regiment of Cadets. And that's something that basically oversees kind of oversees the entire campus. Um, so most of our students are going, participating in the Regiment of Cadets to earn their third mate's license or their third assistant engineer's license in the US Coast Guard. This is essentially just like the DMV issuing our driver's license, but the US Coast Guard is issuing them a license to work or sail on a ship. Now the students who participate in the regiment and then go on to get that license is one option. Now, there are students who participate in the Regiment of Cadets because they like a disciplined lifestyle, but they don't necessarily want to be a, um, a worker on a ship or they want to sail on a ship, but they do like that disciplined lifestyle. So they'll participate in the regimental program, but as a civilian student, but they will have to wear a uniform. I'll explain about the differences between the regimental program and the civilian program in just a little bit. The civilian program, on the other hand, um, they will be earning a professional internship. So that means they'll get their experience through any outside internships um, and then any job opportunities that follow up with that as well. 
And then the different main difference between the two, as I said before, is that the students who are going for that license uh, are taking specialized classes. So they do have to sail on our training ship for three summers starting after their freshman year. Um, and then that gives them sea time in order to get that license to graduate. The civilian students, on the other hand, don't have to follow that program. Uh, so they are basically just take, getting an, at, taking at least one to two internships um, as an undergraduate student to graduate. Um, something else to note is that the Regiment of Cadets, those students do have to wear a uniform. They have to undergo indoctrination, which is a 10 day quote unquote boot camp style for uh, those students prior to entering as a freshman. Um, and they do have to take extra classes for that license. Uh, civilian students, on the other hand, do not have to wear a uniform or participate in any extra classes unless they are in the regiment for the discipline lifestyle aspect. Um, even though the students are, this is kind of a military-esque program for the Regiment of Cadets, it is not a military obligation. We do have the Navy, Marines, um, and other ROTC opportunities on campus as well, but the Regiment of Cadets is not an ROTC uh, commitment uh, whatsoever. So this is our application information as well as requirements. We are available on the SUNY app or the Common app. I tell students to use whatever application is your counselor is most comfortable using. We do require an essay, your high school transcript, your SAT or ACT scores, and at least one letter of recommendation. We are test optional for the uh, for this application season as well as the spring 2022 application season. Um, and then more, we will have more information for upcoming um, application seasons as well. On the right hand side of your screen, you can see all of our requirements for the different programs. Um, and then it is a little bit more uh, kind of stringent on the engineering side because of the math classes. Bachelor of Science students were a little bit more lenient because of the classes aren't as rigorous. Um, but we do require that the Marine environmental science students do have at least um, at least roughly four years of math or science because we want them to also keep on track with some of the math classes we offer. And then lastly, this is my contact information. I will also drop it in the chat feature. Um, this is my email, my Calendly to set up a Zoom with Zoom call with me, my phone number, and we are also active on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Up next, we have Western New England University. Hi everyone, I am Rihanna. I'm an admissions counselor here at Western New England University and I am the representative that you'll be working with for New Jersey. I'm gonna share my screen here in just a second, so bear with me. All right, so Western New England is a private university. We're comprised of four colleges in our School of Law. So we have the College of Arts and Science, College of Business, College of Engineering, and then the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. We have about 2,600 undergraduate students and a 12 to one um, student to faculty ratio. So you really are getting those one-on-one -on -one interactions with your faculty members in a very personalized education. So within our College of Arts and Sciences, this is what we offer in terms of majors and programs. Our College of Business, we are AACSB accredited and we do have an SAP certification as well. For our College of Engineering, we are ABET accredited minus construction management. That is a new major that we added this year. So the accreditation is coming. We do offer some combined degree opportunities for our students to combine their bachelor's and master's degrees. Um, you can also combine them with um, a law degree as well if that's something that you're interested in. It will save you both time and money in the long run. All right, we are division three for our athletics. We have 20 different varsity sports, as you can see below. We also have club rugby and um, intramural excuse me, intramural opportunities if you're not interested in competing at the NCAA level. 
We have a very robust system of um, student support services. So the Office of First Year Students and Students in Transition has put together a very comprehensive first year program that consists of peer advising. So all of our first year students are partnered with a highly trained peer mentor here on campus. They'll help um, with the transition, both academically and socially. They are also part of the first year seminar, which is another piece of the first year program. All first year students will take a first year seminar class based on the major that or the school and college that you are in. And your peer advisor will be a part of that. Additionally, there is French freshman council that consists of about 20 to 25 different first year students um, and it's intended to help foster class identity and get you involved here on campus. Our academic success center has different tutoring opportunities available to our students. If you require any type of learning accommodation, you'll work very closely with our student accessibility services office. And then um, within our career center, you will be assigned a career advisor. Again, this will be based upon the college that you're in, and they'll be there to guide you and work with you as early as your first year on different career um, opportunities. They'll help you um, with internships, um, developing your resume, cover letters, prepping for interviews, all of those good things. And the, your career advisor also ties into our For You Comprehensive Advising model where all students have four different advisors during their time here on campus. Your faculty advisor is assigned to you based upon your major. They'll help you um, with registering for classes. They're a great resource um, and guide you know, for different research opportunities, internships and job opportunities as well. Your university advisor is kind of the all-encompassing advisor here on campus, so they're able to um, point you in the right direction for different resources that you might need. If you decide to change your major or want to add a major or minor, they'll assist you through that process. Um, your career advisor, as I mentioned earlier, and then also your peer advisor, who's the upperclassman that helps you with that transition to campus. Our students are very involved. We have over different over 70 different clubs and organizations. There are different leadership opportunities for our students um, through our new program, Ready to Lead. First year students have the opportunity to get jump right into developing those leadership skills and opportunities. Um, there are different civic engagement opportunities for our students where they'll go and assist um, different communities, both locally and nationally. We're hoping to be able to get back out and do that um, in the coming year as um, we hope for a more normal situation. And then there are always different events going on during the weeks and weekends for our students as well. If you're interested in studying abroad, these are some of the different places that our students have traveled to. You can go for the traditional semester. Our faculty also lead shorter trips during the summer. They're usually seven to 10 days. You will get class credit. So those are opportunities available to you as well. And then for our application process, um, you can apply either through the common application or our own app application that you can find on our website. It's really up to you and whatever is easiest and most convenient. We require that you submit your high school transcript. And then um, we are test optional, so you don't have to submit your SAT or ACT scores. We encourage letters of recommendation in a personal essay, but they are not required. This kind of gives you a breakdown of the different scholarship opportunities available. So every student that is accepted does receive a merit aid scholarship. This year that's ranging between about $11,000 and $22,000. Additionally, we do have a women in business and women in engineering scholarship for those female students that are looking to major in those areas. Um, anyone that is majoring in in the field of criminal justice, we do have a scholarship for social justice as well and first robotics if you've participated in a competition. And this just kind of gives you a breakdown of the timeline. This is what we have for this year. It'll probably be somewhere similar um, for the upcoming fall, but stay tuned for exact dates. Then I definitely recommend um, visiting campus both virtually or in person if you're able to. You can check out our website um, for different opportunities.
And this is my contact information. I'll make sure to drop that in the chat so that if you do have questions, you can follow up. Thanks. Thanks so much. Up next, we've got Xavier University. Let's see here, share. Okay, how's everyone doing today? Um, here we go. So, hello everyone. My name is Dan Sarmiento and I am with the Xavier University Admission Office. I'm based out of New York City. So definitely uh, I am your point person. Um, Xavier is a Jesuit Catholic institution. Uh, we really focus on education in regards to one, bettering themselves so they can really support their community and be one for the community. And that's what really informs the uh, musketeer spirit of sorts. Um, so that's why we're all for one, as you can see. Our freshman class, uh, we have students coming from all over. Uh, we're in the middle of the country, so we kind of circle around Ohio and uh, people are coming from all over. And that really creates a diverse community uh, for students to get a hold of. Um, if the information is going fast, if you're like me, you can screenshot everything. But yes, we definitely, in regards to outcomes, we have a lot of families. Oh, there you go. Um, sorry, it's going a little faster. We have a lot of um, success coaches and academic advising. So that is definitely something that we, um, I'm gonna go back a little, make sure that we focus on for the families and students, but I wanted to make sure you saw our top majors um, in regards to nursing being one of our more uh, rigorous programs. It is a direct entry program. Um, and then you can see from business, biomedical sciences, Cincinnati is very much uh, a city that has a lot of health care. Uh, there's a big focus on the health industry. Um, and then let's see here, going back forward, so um, again, committed to your success. We have a lot of advising and coaching as uh, some of our peer institutions. And you can see there's, there's a lot of different levels from academic to career coaching, to financial aid, to student peer mentoring. So that is definitely something we pride ourselves in terms of being a community. Uh, again, that all for one spirit. Uh, on campus, we have a lot of uh, opportunities for leadership. Uh, we have a lot of different clubs and organizations uh, that students can get involved with, but definitely when it comes to D1 sports, um, well, this past March Madness, we'll kind of ignore that for a second, but yes, we have uh, had some appearances in the Sweet 16 since 2008. Um, and obviously this picture was taken pre-COVID, but school spirit definitely is alive on campus when it comes to rallying behind our student athletes. And the tickets are free. Uh, so that's also a fun thing to kind of keep in mind. Um, as you can see, again, campus life, we have freshmen and sophomore re required to live on campus to help kind of build that community. Uh, and we're 10 minutes from downtown Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati is definitely a great hub. It's home to 10 um, Fortune 500 companies. Uh, students get jobs in Cincinnati and all over the country. And because we're a part of the Jesuit network, uh, we really do have students in uh, many of the cities where there are other Jesuit institutions where we can take advantage of their career services as well and their databases where students can find internships and jobs after college. Uh, and as you can see, we have a 98% uh, success rate. Uh, again, here are some of the um, companies that are kind of based out of Cincinnati. And then our application process. When it comes to the application process, we are on a rolling basis. Uh, the application is free. Uh, you can also use the Common App or the Xavier app. Uh, when it comes to the Common App, um, definitely you can, um, you can use that if you're using that for all your other applications. As I mentioned, it's a rolling application, but for some of our more rigorous programs in terms of nursing, honors, and our competitive scholarships, the deadline is December 1st. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. Uh, again, my name is Dan Sarmiento. I'm gonna put my information in the chat, um, but definitely, yes, I encourage you to visit campus. We have had many students um, basically come to campus. We've been live all year. 
And uh, basically, uh, again, uh, we're intending to be in person this coming fall. So that's something that we're really proud of in terms of being able to have students get that real life experience. So thank you, and we'll go from there. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we have York College of Pennsylvania. Take it away. All right, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Derek Butler. I am an Assistant Director of Admissions at York College of Pennsylvania. Um, I'm also the admission representative that works with all students coming from the state of New Jersey. So after this evening, if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask about your college, I would be your point person. And I, like the others, will be sure to leave my contact information in the chat feature so you can copy that over easily. Um, I just want to get started by talking a little bit about where we're located, if you're not familiar with York. Um, we are a small city in south central Pennsylvania. Um, we're at the heart of a number of larger cities um, that provide a lot of great opportunities for our students looking at both internships and then career opportunities down the road. So we are about 45 minutes from both Harrisburg and Lancaster, about an hour uh, north of Baltimore, two hours from Philadelphia and Washington DC. And then a little bit further out, we are about three hours from New York City and about four hours from both Pittsburgh and Richmond. Um, as an institution, we are considered mid-size. We're a private school with about 4,000 undergraduate students. Right now, we offer over 70 different majors. Some of the most popular include our direct admit nursing program. We have four different engineering majors that are very popular for us. We offer about 25 different majors alone under our Graham School of Business. We have a number of education programs that are very popular. And then criminal justice is always in our top five in terms of popularity every year. Um, we also offer over 70 different minors, so we try to make it very easy to customize your educational experience at York. So if you want to double major, if you want to change your major at some point during your four years, if you want to add multiple minors, it's very easy to do so with the help of your academic advisors. Um, the other part of our population at York is our full-time faculty. All of our classes are taught either by full-time professors or adjunct faculty. We don't have any grad students or TAs leading lectures because we want you to learn directly from professionals in the field. We try to keep a very personalized experience at York as well in terms of classroom size. So classes generally range between about 10 and 35 at the most with an average currently being about 19. So it's very similar to what you've experienced in high school for many students. Um, we keep the student faculty ratio about 15 to one. So that way you have the ability to connect with your faculty members you can connect with your peers in the classroom and really have that experience where um, you have assistance if you need help with what you're going over in your classes. Um, moving on then, I uh, want to give you a quick orientation of campus itself. So we have three separate sections that make up your college's campus. We are located in a suburban area right on the edge of the city of York. Um, so our campus is mixed into a residential neighborhood. Um, with three separate sections, main, west, and north campus. Um, from one side of main campus to the far side of west campus, you can easily walk it so within 15 minutes. It's a very safe and close-knit community. Um, we are a residential school, so we guarantee you on-campus housing all four years that you're at your college. All of our first-year students do live in traditional-style residence halls. Um, so you have either a double or single room. You have shared common areas. Um, laundry, the traditional residence hall setup. After your first year, you have access to different types of options. So some buildings are more suite style. You have full-size apartments, even full-size houses. The college will uh, rent out to groups of students. And all of that does fall under the York College Residence Life umbrella. You never have to go off campus to find housing here in York. You had a lot of questions about cars. Um, we are a campus with plenty of parking, so you can have a car on campus right away your first year, and you can continue to bring that all the way through your senior year. You just have to register it with campus safety. Um, in terms of involvement, we are a campus that I always say it's very hard to not get involved. You have to actively try to find a way to not be engaged in our campus. We have well over 100 different clubs and organizations to choose from. There's plenty of activities, regardless of your background or interests. We have everything from service groups, performance groups, special interest clubs, Greek life, religious life, um, club and intramural sports, a little bit of everything. We are a very active campus. We're not the kind of school where everyone leaves on a Friday afternoon. 
Um, we're not a suitcase campus. It's definitely a place where you will be engaged throughout the week and on the weekends. We have well over 100 events we host on campus every semester. That way you always have something to do and we try to host events that have a different focus for students that have different interests as well. In terms of varsity athletics, we are an NCAA Division III school. We have 23 teams. The only major sport we don't offer is football. If you ever have questions about getting in touch with a coach or starting that recruiting process, again, let me as your counselor know, and I'm happy to help facilitate that conversation. Um, I want to talk quickly about the cost of attendance. So for the coming year, um, we, like I said, we are a private institution, so um, in and out of state tuition is exactly the same. Your tuition fees, room and board all combined are about $34,400 per year before any scholarships or financial aid are applied. Um, every student that is accepted to York does receive a merit scholarship from us that ranges between one and $10,000 per year. And it is a renewable scholarship that you will get each year, as long as you stay in good standing with the school. We do offer some other scholarships that are competitive in nature. There are separate application processes for each. We have a full tuition scholarship opportunity. So we definitely encourage our admitted students to take a look at those opportunities. Um, all of them do stack on top of that initial merit award that you receive. And then we do ask families to submit the FAFSA to us. About 99% of our new students do receive some form of need-based financial aid. Our goal is always to make sure that York is as affordable an option as possible for all of our students if they really want to be a part of our community. Um, a quick breakdown then of our application process is here. We are um, a member of the Common Application as well as um, using our own application. Both ways are free. We work on a regular decision process that is rolling, so we have no specific deadlines and we send out decisions as they're made. We will be test optional for next year as well. If you have questions about that process, I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, and just one final note, we are hosting in-person and virtual visits at this point as well. So we would love to see you on campus. Um, if you do have any questions after tonight, like I said, I am the counselor for all New Jersey students. So please let me know what questions you have and I'll be happy to help you throughout this process. Thanks, Thanks Derek. All right, we have reached the end of uh, the presentations. And so very briefly, I wanted to pose this fun Q&A for all of our counselors to answer. So in the order that you presented, um, feel free to share a fun or interesting fact about your school. We'll start with SUNY Maritime College. So one of the interesting facts about SUNY Maritime is that we are essentially what again one of the oldest SUNY campuses within the system and then what's also great is that we also served as a um, our fort that we have on our campus was actually fully functional back around the time of the Civil War era um, so that was used as an uh, basically a hospital center for um, any troops that got injured so people who have actually used that campus um, as a as a fort um, that actually transitioned into a training center um, in 1874 and essentially that's when our um, our campus was institutionalized uh, back in 1874 and our library that was part of the original um, that was built for um, at that time was actually used for the original cafeteria or the mess that we would call it. So the tables that we have currently in that in our library is still being used today. Um, that was from when the school first opened in 1874. So it's a lot of history on campus, um, just ingrained within um, a SUNY Maritime. Very cool. Thank you so much. Western New England University. All right, so one fun fact about us, uh, Western New England is ranked number one in Massachusetts and number five in the nation for getting a job according to Zipia. Love that. Xavier University. So we actually have two official mascots and uh, it is a very interesting thing because we are the Musketeers, but if you've seen any of the games, you're gonna see this big blue blob uh, kind of running around. And that is because the blob came about when people started thinking that the musketeer was too scary or a little too like a, a little too aggressive. And so they came up with the blue blob, which is this friendly, goopy, blue, furry thing that you'll see if you watch any of the games um, running around. It's just a big blue blob because I guess the musketeer is too scary. Can't argue that. Uh, and York College of Pennsylvania, go ahead. 
Sure. So um, your College of Pennsylvania is actually a very old institution. We actually date back in some form or another. Um, we've gone through many name changes to 1789 or 1787, depending on where you look. Um, so we're a very old institution. And one of the facts that it's a little bit more about where we're located and not so much about our school, but York is a very historic place in our nation's history. Um, we are actually the location where the Articles of Confederation were written, and we are also the location where the first national day of Thanksgiving was declared. So Thanksgiving Day is technically dating back to York, Pennsylvania, in some form or another. Love that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four-question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. In about a week, you'll be able to find the session's recording as well as all other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash New Jersey. Thank you so much to our panelists for sharing today and have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.